Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by D'Agostini Collectibles. D'Agostini Collectibles has unveiled the American Car Collection of 143 scale diecast models. The American Car Series brings together some of the most powerful and famous vehicles created by the U.S. automobile industry in a planned series of 80 collectible scale miniatures. Here you see some of the most spectacular American cars that are part of the collection of these fascinating models. Each issue showcases the featured model car and includes its history, technical characteristics, its evolution, and it's illustrated with beautiful photographs in a magazine for it. Now D'Agostino offers these collections through subscription systems. Check out the link uh, on their site below the review here that details the program there. In, in short, I can tell you that these are nicely detailed models in 1 43rd scale that are very attractive, affordable, and appropriately sized to include in a large collection. Now you can opt out any time and the first issues are specially priced too. These excellent models come in 1 43rd scale and that's about about four inches long. It's a preferred scale for racing car uh, collectors. Now every element of the original design is captured in these amazing replicas. It's an accurate and detailed reproduction in die cast metal with injection molded plastic. They're precision made with realistic detail and hand painted as well. Each one comes with a clear presentation case including a display stand with information identifying each car. Now the model is mounted to the stand with two screws to ensure it does not come off its base. And the display case itself is about 6 inches long, 3 inches wide, and 2 and 3 quarter inches high. Each model comes with a magazine that exquisitely illustrates different aspects of it. It talks about the model and gives technical uh, stats uh, about it and describes the model itself uh, in the one to one form. Now, it also has a little segment about Made in America, which talks about some... Um, it also includes a little section on USA News, which happened during the uh, evolution and release of the original car or model. Now, the brand talks about um, the manufacturer that made the car and a little bit of its history. Along with the models that you purchase, you'll also receive some as free gifts. They come at specific intervals during the shipping process, and they're just as exquisite as the others. Here is one of the examples of the free gifts that you would get with your subscription. On your eighth delivery, you'll receive a Shelby Cobra model. I think this is just another great reason for the entire program. I think anybody would love these wonderful die-cast collectibles, and here's why. This review covers the D'Agostini series American cars, and these are 1 43rd die cast replicas of some of the most iconic American cars. And um, we sure uh, you'll appreciate these uh, display ready uh, um, uh, replicas, and uh, they can be purchased by subscription. Issue 43 in the series is the 1973 Plymouth Duster. Now, the Duster was a popular compact car, and it was uh, a continuation of the fizzled out muscle car era um, because everybody could use a small sporty car. Now it was um, a two door coupe body style and had a fast back roof line. It offered a balance between performance and practicality which made it an appealing choice for both enthusiasts and everyday drivers. Now with a price point starting around $2500 uh, it was affordable and it still had some nice styling. It came with a number of engine options, including a 3.2 inline 6 cylinder and two V8s, a 5.2 and a 5.6 liter version. Now these engines provided a range of horsepowers uh, to suit different driving preferences. And the uh, Duster enjoyed good sales during its year in, of 73 and uh, estimates are around 220,000 units. Its popularity could be attributed to its attractive price, versatile performance, and growing demand for compact cars. Overall, the 73 Plymouth Duster left a nice lasting impact on the automotive industry as a well-received compact car. 
His shoe, 44, is the 1970 Olds Cutlass Rally 350. It was a high-performance variant of the popular Cutlass, and it was designed to cater to muscle car enthusiasts. It combined stylish appearances with powerful performance, and the Rally 350 featured unique exterior cues, including bright colors, bold stripes, and color-keyed wheels. The distinctive hood also had functional air scoops, and it came with a Rally suspension. Priced at around $3,500 then, it was positioned as an affordable option for those looking for potent and visually striking muscle cars. It was equipped with a 350 cubic inch rocket V8 that in, uh, had uh, an impressive 310 horsepower. Now, its robust powertrain and lightweight construction made it pretty quick. And also, the looks department didn't suffer from that large rear airfoil as well. Now, they produced only a limited number of these. Uh, about 3,500 were built, making it relatively rare. And its exclusivity and high performance features contributed to its appeal. The Rally 350 showcased Oldsmobile's commitment to producing muscle cars. And in summary, it stands as a testament to Olds' pursuit of performance and style. Issue 45 is the 1964 Shelby AC Cobra 427 SC. Now, that turned out to be an iconic American sports car that left a lasting impact on the auto world. Designed by Carroll Shelby, it combined a lightweight British AC Ace chassis and a powerful American V8 engine to create a high-performance masterpiece. It featured a muscular and aggressive design wide fenders and a distinctive grille and a custom exhaust. Based at, uh, base priced at around $7,500, it was about double what a muscle car sold for back then. But with those kind of performance uh, figures, you know, at zero to 60 in just four and a half seconds, it justified its price. The limited production and high price, you know, kept units um, down to a minimum and we, ex think that there were about 31 of these uh, SCs, that's the semi-competition version, built. They were specifically designed for racing and featured enhancements like a stronger frame. Th this vehicle has an enduring popularity and is extremely expensive on today's market. For issue number 46, the 1977 Mustang Cobra Mark II, the Cobra II was a distinctive variant of the Mustang II, and it was uh, designed to capture the spirit of performance and style. It had a bold and aggressive appearance and prominent racing stripes, a front air dam, rear spoiler, and unique Cobra badging. Now, the Cobra II was aimed at enthusiasts who wanted a sportier look and a hint at performance. The base price was around $4,400 making it an accessible option for buyers that are looking for something in that market. And it came with uh, versions of a four-cylinder engine all the way through to a, a five-liter V8 and a 5.0. Now, although the exact numbers aren't readily available, there were a pretty good number of these uh, sold alongside the regular Mustang twos, And it holds a unique place in Mustang history kind of representing a transitionary period uh, for the iconic pony car. And while it didn't have uh, the great performance-oriented um, figures as its predecessors, it still kept a role in keeping the brand alive uh, during strict emission control periods. Issue 47 was a conversion by the Yanko Chevrolet dealership to make the Vega, the Chevrolet Vega, into a Stinger Yanko Coupe. Now, the 72 Vega was a sought-after performance variant of the, uh, the small car Vega, which was just a small compact for uh, gas mileage concerns. And it was designed to deliver some exhilarating speed and handling for its size. Now, it has a li limited production run, which had, you know, pretty aggressive styling and nice uh, performance upgrades. The Stinger uh, Coupe featured a a distinctive front air dam, side stripes, and some Yanko badging to set it apart. The base price of the Yanko uh, Stinger Coupe was about $4,100, and that reflected the added performance enhancements. Under the hood, it had a modified version of the inline four uh, engine and featured high performance camshaft, uh, a revised carburetor, 
and some free-flowing exhaust. They gave the engine's output about 140 horsepower. Its um, limited production nature and exact sales figures aren't really available, uh, but it's estimated that uh, they produced a small quantity of these uh, performance-oriented Vegas, which makes them pretty rare in today's collectible market. The coupe, the coupe's exclusivity and reputation for enhanced performance made it pretty sought after back then and still today. Issue number 48 is the 1968-69 Pontiac GTO Royal Bobcat. Now, it was a very special edition uh, that featured custom paint uh, and modified renowned performance tuning company Royal Pontiac, which helped um, inject a little life into the engine. It had enhanced performance and distinctive styling, and it was pretty sought after by muscle car enthusiasts. Today, um, they're kind of rare, so they collect um, a pretty a command a pretty good amount uh, on the collectibles market. They had you know hood scoops and unique badging and performance upgrades. The base price, you know, was um, typically about $500 more in 68 and uh, $1,000 extra for the Royal Bobcat vari variations. Uh, but it was justified by the notable increase in performance and overall appeal. Now, it holds a special place in the history of the GTL. The, the Bobcat package allowed owners to unleash the uh, full potential of the GTO and gave them increased horsepower, better handling, and an aggressive appearance. Today it's uh, highly sought after by collectors and who, they can appreciate the combination of Pontiac's iconic muscle car and Royal Pontiac's addition to performance. Issue 49 is the 1967 Ford GT40 Mark I. Showcased and enshrined in history in the movie Ford vs. Ferrari, the 67 Ford GT40 Mark I is a legendary race car that left an indelible mark in motorsport history. It was developed to challenge Ferrari's dominance in endurance racing, and it was the culmination of Ford's effort to conquer the prestigious 24-hour Le Mans race. It had a low aerodynamic profile and aggressive design, and it showcased a perfect balance of form and function. It had a base price of about $18,500, making it a very high-end, exclusive sports car for its time. The limited availability and special racing purpose justified the premium tag, but it was powered by a 4.7 V8 engine delivering remarkable horsepower and torque. Exact production numbers aren't, aren't really kind of fuzzy, but we think about 31 units were built. These limited quantities reflect the specialized nature of the vehicle, and it's highly sought after back then by racing teams and now by collectors. It became an iconic symbol of Ford's achievements and allowed it to conquer the 24 hours of Le Mans races from 66 to 69. Last but not least is issue number 50, the 1969 Mercury Marauder X100. Trying to cash in on the muscle car craze, Mercury packed a big motor into one of its large luxury vehicles. It was pretty stylish and had uh, special appointments with an aggressive design and some potent performance for a large car. It was a standout for buyers that wanted luxury and speed. It featured a distinctive grille, quad headlights, and bold body lines that set it apart from the regular Marauder model. The base price was around $3,800, positioning it as a premium offering in the Mercury lineup. And despite its higher price tag, it came well equipped with luxury features and powerful engine choices. A standard 392 barrel was a 265 horsepower unit, but you could also go all the way up to a 428 cubic inch V8 with 335 horsepower. It's estimated that a little over 5,600 were, were built, but that wasn't enough to continue the vehicle much longer. And let's face it, the craze was kind of uh, going away about then. So it had a high price point in niche market, and the limited production makes it a desirable collectible item even today. Well, we hope you like this premium model 
Diecast review, and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews. Thanks!